Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of the Sega Nerdcast. I am Chris Powell, the editor of Sega Nerds, coming from you from sunny Florida. And with me today, we have the Sega Nerds European editor, Graham Cookson. How's it going, buddy? Hey, it's good. How are you? <sighs> Not too bad. Not too yeah, bad. Nice. This is the uh, Sega Nerdcast episode three. We are recording yeah. on April 21st, and we're also broadcasting live, so... Uh, if you are watching us on YouTube, hello. Thank you for uh, viewing. And it's not going to be a very polished show. Uh, <laughs> we do that once we uh, do our post-edit in our audio form. Uh, oh, yeah. But we do have some really cool things in store for you today. Uh, a matter of fact, later on we're going to have Roger Vega on the show. He is the owner of the Sega Pluto Prototype 1 system that uh, has been capturing gamers' hearts and minds this oh, past yeah. week. Um, so stuff. <laughs> He's going to come on the show later on to talk about uh, the system, uh, you know, how he found it, that sort of thing. And he also actually just added it um, up as an auction on GameGavel.com. So he's going to talk to us a little bit about that, why he's doing that, and uh, and how much it may cost to actually win that. That's going to be kind of interesting. But before that, we're going to talk about what we've been up to this week and also run through the newsstand to talk about all the uh, crazy Sega happening uh, this week. So, Graham, why don't you get us started and tell us what you've been up to. What I've been up to? Wow. Uh, um, okay. Skip to the end of the week. Uh, have you heard of something called Honest Trailers? It's on YouTube. No. Okay, it's basically this guy's got a really cool voice. He does a voiceover for trailers of movies and DVDs and stuff, but does them like in an honest way. So it's once a movie's normally been launched and stuff, that he talks about stuff that happens in the movie with clips of it. But it's like a funny trailer he basically makes up. Anyway, he did one for all the seven Harry Potter movies. And it's like one of the funniest things I've ever seen. I'm a big fan of Harry Potter. And everything he said about it was just brilliant. Because it sort of takes the piss out of the whole, you know, the franchise. <laughs> but it's so good. Um, but yeah, that gave me the urge to watch the Harry Potter movies. And the only two I could find that I've got on DVD were five and six. Um, and book-wise, book five, The Order of the Phoenix, is actually my favorite book. Um and book six, which is the Half Blood Prince, is, Prince is my worst book. Movie wise, though, it's complete opposite. Number five is just dreadful. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. <laughs> Number six is a genuinely good movie, though. I mean, the Harry Potter movie is all a bit crappy, but I was watching it going, you know what? This is actually a good movie on its own. It's just a good film. So, big fan. Uh, and then today, I had a very hectic day because we were meant to start recording earlier, but I went ice skating with a Czechoslovakian, a Hungarian, and two Spanish ladies today. <laughs> so that was fun. Uh, wow, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> and the Spanish girl said uh, like one of the funniest things I think I've ever heard. Like, You have to imagine it with a Spanish accent, but I can't really do that. <laughs> but there's smoke coming from a barbecue nearby, so we're sitting outside eating some food at one point. And there's smoke coming from a barbecue like going in, going like in our direction. <laughs> and she said, no, I don't want to smell like a gypsy. See, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah, have an accent. Do they smell better. like barbecue? I don't know. I was, I was just like, "What are you talking about?" But apparently, in in Spain, they if if someone smells like smoke, they say they smell like a gypsy. <laughs> it's, it almost sounded like something Borat would say. He was fantastic. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Went ice skating, had some fun. Yeah, and watched Harry Potter. <laughs> Oh, okay, sorry. Roger just sent. Uh, oh yeah. Um, sent me a message. Um, keep talking for a second. Sorry, my my Twitter app on my because uh, I've got a Windows 8 computer. My Twitter app just pinged up on my screen and then like maybe it went big. So yeah. Um. um so yeah. Uh, that was pretty much what I did this weekend. <laughs> you still want me to keep talking? <laughs> more seconds okay uh, so okay last Friday not not this past Friday but last Friday uh, we weren't able I guess we recorded a little earlier in the week so I wasn't able to tell you about it so we went out um, I'm still out down here in Florida like I was saying before I'm gonna take off my glasses um, and we went out to do uh, like exercising we call it PT in the Air Force physical training so we all went out uh, to do some exercise as a group the whole school did and there's like almost 200 students. So we all get out there, and they're, they're running us through uh, all the, the exercises that we're going to do and everything. And it, we ended up being outside in the afternoon for about three hours. And at first, it felt really good outside. 
It was kind of cloudy and there was a nice breeze. But after about 30 minutes, it got really hot. Like the sun came out. It was just really sunny. I got so sunburned. The Probably one of the worst sunburns <laughs> I've ever had in my life. I didn't realize how bad it was until probably that night. And I got like the chills. Like... <laughs> And I, I couldn't like sleep. I was cold, but oh I was God, hot at the same really time. Bad. My uh, my face started blistering, like right here. Like I got blisters. You can still see like this, like right here and like up here. It's all oh, like, from the yeah. It's just it's just still marks. Like I, I've been peeling dead skin off my face, <laughs> and like my arms are still really bad. There's like skin still coming off. I'm still peeling stuff, and the my legs got really sunburned. Like my whole body was pretty bad. <laughs> and it felt, my friend, every, all the white people in the school got really sunburned. Like, all the Mexicans and black people, they were fine. But uh, my friend equated, he, he had a really good, like, uh, analogy. He said it felt like you're a hot dog that's, like, been on the, um, the, uh, the grill for too long, and it's, like, about to burst open. Like, your, that's what your skin felt like as you're walking. <laughs> oh. oh, it was the worst. It hurt just to, just to walk around. I mean, it hurt. My left leg, I could barely move it. Um, so oh, man. I'm finally over it now, but I'm not going to go outside again. Like, I don't want to go to the beach. <laughs> Everyone's going out and, like, going to the beach and going to hang out. I am not doing that. I do not want to get sunburned again. Uh, it was an incredibly <laughs> bad experience, so oh, fuck that. <laughs> um, oh, this past Thursday, I went and saw Oblivion, that new uh, oh. Tom Cruise movie. Good? Good? Oh, uh, yeah, it was pretty good. I liked it. Um I mean, it looks really good from the trailers. Um, I'm not a massive Tom Cruise fan, but I think it looks really good. Yeah, visually, it's awesome. Uh, it was... If you watch the trailers, I I don't know. I guess you've already said you, you've seen the trailer, but I would have suggested you not watch the trailers because it, it's oh. definitely... It gives a lot of spoilers and stuff away in the movie because you kind of have a pretty good understanding of what's going to happen right away, which the movie kind of doesn't isn't so like open about some of the, the plot twists and stuff okay. that the trailers show. Um, so I definitely, this is one of the movie that I would definitely suggest anyone who uh, hasn't seen the trailer, don't do it because it'll spoil it for you. Oh, um, man, okay. Yeah, but, but it was still pretty good. And like I said, visually, it, it was amazing. There's some really awesome uh, scenes where it just shows like uh, the United States that's basically just been completely uh, obliterated through... A series of like earthquakes and um, yeah. natural disasters and stuff like that. Um, pretty good movie. Um, I definitely well, suggest it. One, one of my friends says it. He reminded him of Wally, but with humans. Do you remember Wally? Like when he's just alone, like he has to go down to the earth and like yeah, sort, sort um, things out. Because he said it's a bit like that. He was like, so when something went wrong down on earth, he had to like, go down to earth and sort it out. Like at the start of the movie, was like, I don't know, I haven't seen it. So, but huh. my friend was like, yeah, it's almost like Wally. <laughs> The thing that was yeah. really annoying is is it had that you know um what movie started it uh, it's just that really loud like blaring noise I think it was um in uh, what's the one where they go back in like dreams and stuff it's not so long ago oh yeah 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 um, Inception Inception thank you so you know that really loud noise that they do yeah. in Inception it they does also that have a mass lot. effect as well they did it in Battlefront Battlefield two I think. Uh, they did it in the, in the trailers well. uh, for Battlefield. Oh, okay, II. yeah. But I'm sure they do in Mass Effect Three. Yeah, I don't understand well. like what this new thing is like with <laughs> with like, why they're doing it. It's the most annoying thing in the world. Plus, <laughs> it was an it, we were watching an IMAX, so it was really really loud, and you could just like feel it in your body. It was so loud, it was annoying. I, I was not happy with it. I was like, this is this is not fun at all. <laughs> oh, uh, I don't know. Not a good thing. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> One last thing I do want to talk about really quick. Um, okay. I don't know if very many people know a, about an indie game called 99 Levels to Hell. Um, it's not really has has anything uh, to do with Sega at all, but uh, it's it was an indie game that was just released. It's, it's like a 2D uh, platforming roguelike game. Pretty pretty awesome yeah. game. It's uh, on DesiraGog.com. I think it's coming. Is it coming to Steam? He's got it on Steam Live. I know like the promotion thing. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. If, I don't think it's on Steam yet, but yeah, he's uh, trying to get on there though. It's a it's a basically all created by one guy named Bo Blonde, uh, who's a friend of ours. Uh, we had him on the Bitloader show over on Bitloaders.com. But Graham and I actually wrote the storyline to the game. It was it's all like played out in poem form, 
I'm pretty proud of it, but uh, Bo, Bo ended up contacting us this week saying that he's going to be working on another game, and he wanted us to uh, work on the storyline for that game too. So that's awesome. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty excited about that. What do you think, Graham? I'm very excited. I mean, because... La- on Night Time Evers to Hell, Bo sort of had the story pretty much. We didn't have the because we did it in poem form. We didn't have the poem written out, so we sort of did the poem for him basically. And the storyline we wrote was basically structured around what he had. But he said, "With this one, hopefully, we'll get to write more of the story, which I'm really excited about." Does he say it's going to be an adventure game or something? That he's thinking of. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's going to be. I think it's going to be more story involved. So it's going to be even better for us. So yeah, I'm mm. excited to do that. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> yeah, so, no, that'll be fun. I'm excited because it's yeah. one of the things that uh, I've actually wanted to get uh, more involved in and see if I can kind of eke out like a little niche for me. This is like writing, you know, video game stories and stuff like that. I think that would be really fun. Yeah. And this is some really good experience in, in, you know, that whole video game creation type thing. Because really writing is pretty much my only skill. Like I can't <laughs> uh, create anything else uh, yeah, other, same than, other than writing uh, something. Uh, well, should we move on? Let's move on. Uh, let's get into the yeah. news day now. Uh, okay. We're going to talk about the, the Sega Pluto. I want to talk about the first Sega Pluto that came uh, to light here recently. And then we're going to go into the other one. And that's when we want to bring in uh, Roger Vega. So, Graham, why don't you tell us a little bit about the first system? Okay. Um, well, essentially, a well, as for, from what we know, there's a former Sega developer, a former guy who worked at Sega, basically, employee. Um, he uh, he basically just came out and um, like to- told people about this Sega Pluto, which was... Effectively, it's a Sega Saturn with a built-in Netlink adapter, so you can go on the internet directly with it. Before, you'd have to actually buy an adapter you plug it into the back of the Saturn. But this was a bigger unit, bigger console. It still said Sega Saturn on the top, but they only made two prototypes. And, like, he happened to have one of them. So he was like, uh, yeah, he's like, yeah, I've got one of them. It's, it says Pluto 002 on the side of it. So he knew it was the second one that, that they'd made, and he knew they only made two of them. Um, um, yeah, uh, I don't know what else to say about it, really. Uh, <laughs> it was kind of exciting, though, because, like, pretty much not... Well, the weird thing is, I actually do vaguely remember hearing about something called the Pluto, but I didn't know what it was. This was years ago, though, like, way, way, way back. I think back when I was reading, say, Assassin magazine, I remember hearing the name Pluto banded around, but I don't know what it was, but... We, no, pretty much no one knew this thing existed. So, for Sega fans, Sega nerds, and just general video game fans, it's kind of pretty cool. Like we're like, whoa! And it's like a really rare console. It's one of the rarest consoles you can get, pretty much, because yeah, only two in existence. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I guess he got it. it was, he he has owned it for like the past fourteen years, and it was one yeah. of those. I guess he got ended up getting laid off from Sega, and I think um, his friend, I can't remember his name, who. He, He's passed away since from brain cancer, I believe. Um, but his friend gave it to him as kind of one of those like parting gifts, and he just had it in the you know in his closet for the past fourteen years. And I, I can't remember exactly why he decided to uh, to bring it out now, but he did, and everyone went crazy about it. I actually contacted him on the Assembler Games forums, and I, I invited him on the show, uh, and he said that you know he would have loved to have come on, but I guess he still has some sort of working relationship with Sega. And he just didn't uh, think it was probably a good idea for him to come on and talk more about it. Uh, um, yeah. So that's okay. But so we do it. have uh, the next best thing is is Roger, and <laughs> let's see, let's invite him in right now. Let's see here. We're gonna invite you in, Roger. Okay. Give us let's a see. Mm. Let's see. And so, tell us a little bit about uh, Roger Graham. Uh, well, what do we actually know about Roger? I, have to know. Well, I mean, about I the story that involved him. You're the one who okay, wrote it. About the story in general. We should introduce the guy. Uh, As um, we wait for him. Okay, essentially, oh, he's coming on. I think he's coming on now, actually. Okay. Uh, yeah. There he is. Yeah. Oh, hey, what do you know about Roger? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, man? It's going. I don't know. Can you see me? I don't know if the lighting's good or... Uh, no, you like look a like a dark silhouette. silhouette. It's kind of cool. Oh, sure. I, I like it. <laughs> Mystery. Upcoming <laughs> <laughs> challenger. Exactly. <laughs> this is better. 
It seems like good. we were trying to like hide your identity. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. know. I have like a bar across my eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Loving the hat, by the way, dude. Thank Love you. it. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Roger, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, five three, hundred twenty pounds, like long walks on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take us back. Okay, um, obviously we want to we want to talk about uh, the Sega Pluto. Um, tell us uh, how you found uh, the system and how you came to own it. Um, I thrift store and flea market a lot, like constantly, and I've been for up ten years since I was probably like ten, eight, if not younger. And I've just been collecting stuff ever since. And I came up on it, like I said, in Stockton. And like I really did buy it for a buck. They just had it on the table. And I was like, oh, this looks dope. It's this big old black Sega Saturn thing. You know what I mean? I was like, hey, that's cool. And I was like, he gave it to me. And I had it in a big bag. And I was like, OK, well, this is cool. I'm walking around the flea market with this <laughs> huge Sega. You know what I mean? I didn't know it was worth anything. And then um, I had it. And I, had, I couldn't find any information on it. You know, there's like little to no information on it, and so I just sat on it, and I had talked to, I can't remember the name of the site, but it was some retro game site, and I sent pictures to some dude, and I was like, hey, like, you guys do retro games, and it was some crazy site, and he was like, yeah, like, send me pictures, I'll tell you what it is. He's like, oh, it's a knockoff. It's a Japanese <laughs> knockoff. And I was like, okay, it's a really good knockoff, you know what I mean? Yeah. it loads up and everything, and so I tried putting Japanese games in it, and like Super Magnetic said, it wouldn't load. Huh. And so I was like, okay, it's probably broken, whatever, so I just had it sitting in a drawer, this whole time, I've been, uh, I can, yeah, yeah, I've just been sitting for the, all these years because I thought it was broken, and I thought it was a knockoff. And so and when, when, did, magnetic... when did you buy it then? Huh? When did you end up buying it? It had to be, like I said, five or six years ago, if not oh, wow. way before. I mean, I guess I just, I collect so much stuff, it's just one more thing I have sitting around, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, um. Super Magnetic made his post on Assembler, uh, then I seen it on Destructoid before I went to work in the morning. I, you know, checked Destructoid or checked all different kind of uh, blogs and stuff. And then, uh, so I just messaged him on uh, Destructoid, and then I got on Assembler and messaged him, and then I just made my video. Oh, man, that's so cool. Uh, I just, yeah, it's, uh, it's ridiculous, really. It seems really yeah. silly, and it's really funny because, like, I started posting on it, and then I started getting all of these, like, posts, reposts through different sites, and then now there's, like, all these rumor of guy found it in garage, a garage sale, and it's like, I distinctly say I found it at a flea market <laughs> in the video, so I don't think any of these people are copying, pasting this rumor, or even watching my video. Yeah, um, it's, when, when, when you sort of tweeted it out, Twitter went pretty much crazy about it, like, uh, I just remember seeing all these tweet feeds coming up, and it's just... It was awesome. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, it's been really crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I think the fact that you got it for one dollar is just like the best find ever. Like, not just for Sega fans, but for like any like video game nerd ever. That's like the best find. One dollar. It's like well, and it seems ridiculous. So it just seems silly, right? <laughs> it's like really somebody would sell this for a dollar. But I mean, I had no idea what it was, and I'm hardcore about it too. You know, I'm just excited as everybody else. Yeah, man. So, um, what made you like put it up on like? Because you've put it out for auction now on um, what's the website? I can't remember the website. Gavel or something? Game yeah, Gavel. Yeah, yes. Gavel dot com. Yeah. Um, what made you put it up there? Is it just uh, literally you wanted to see how much you could get for it, or you just I was kind of wondering what? It, yeah, to share it. I mean, because more people are going to check out their site and see it. And I mean, I'm kind of interested how much it's worth, but I mean. Help my parents pay bills and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's cool. That's it's, awesome. It's gonna do more for bills and everything than it is sitting in my drawer for another what twenty years. You know? <laughs> yeah, true. And, and I don't like sitting on something that expensive. It makes me feel paranoid having something that <laughs> valuable. I mean, I guess I go to so many thrift stores and flea markets. Everything I have isn't worth nearly that much. Yeah, man. But uh, because um, the, the the thing is, we we put we we post up the story that you. You were putting up for auction. Uh, was it today? We posted it up. Um, it was, yeah. it was I, last night. Oh, it was last night. Okay, because because okay, yeah. I've been I've been out all day. And I just saw saw it on my phone. I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to click on the link. I'm going to see how much it is because you know I might pay pay like a couple of hundred dollars for it myself. Yeah. I don't have much money. It's on seven thousand six hundred dollars. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Then, no, and it was in the first <laughs> hour too, which bits. is even crazier because we had posted it in like the first five minutes. It was like fifty bucks, and I was like talking to my girlfriend, like, "Yeah, we made fifty bucks." You know, I, I made a forty-nine dollar increase in profit. And then like we went to the store and came back, and I was like, "Oh, it's at seven thousand. <laughs> like, oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, just like no. Way. I was just like, "Yeah, I could put you. I could probably stretch you a couple of hundred, but." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, only, there's only three bids on it right now, and it just skyrocketed. Like, Man. 
And if it tends to be like, if it works out like, you know, like in eBay, like the last few minutes are always the most exciting because everyone just starts bidding on it. If it turns out like that, you're going to get a huge amount, dude. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, it's crazy. Like I said, it seems silly. It just seems really unrealistic, you know what I mean? Just sitting on something, I, I'm i pretty stoked about having it. I mean, I'd love to keep it or even give it to a museum or something, but I mean, yeah. as much as I need a, ni- a nice tax break right now. <laughs> But it's got like it's got just over four days left on it. Four days, eight hours, according to this that I'm looking at now. Yeah, something so, uh, there. Yeah, so if you've got the money, feel free to bid on it, guys. Like, yeah, if it's anyone's there. out there, GameGavel.com, check it out. Yeah, it's awesome. It's <laughs> so, so not a question though, because it in the uh, in the description, you, it it almost read like you were more interested in in finding out what the value is of the system rather than selling it uh, outright. Is that? Is that true, or are you looking actually to to sell it uh, through Game Gavel? Uh, I'd like to sell it through Game Gavel, but mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I, I'm kind of curious to how much it's worth. I mean, it's just so rare. I mean, I, I've asked people, I've talked to a lot of different people, and they're like, I really don't know where to start. There's just, there's no, even on Game Gavel, they made me my own section for Sega Pluto because there was no section for it <laughs> because nobody knew. It's like I'm sitting on top. You know what I mean? You just, you don't know where to start. It's like I just make up a number, and like yeah. that's how much I'm gonna sell it for. Well, the crazy. The crazy thing is, is I, I think this is pretty, and I said this in, in the article I wrote last night, I think it's pretty unprecedented uh, for any time in the game industry for just an, a, a previously unknown console to just spring up out of the blue. And then, you know, the, all we know is that there's two of them. So, I mean, it's an incredibly rare, probably one of the most rare systems of all time. How do you put a price on something like that, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's where I'm at with it. It's just kind of like see where it goes really that's kind of like yeah. how i want to know how much it's worth too just just where do you start i mean have, have you has has anyone in the i guess uh the collectors like uh scene throwing you a number on what they think it might be worth no not really i've had people on youtube try to make me like what's the lowest you'll sell it for it's like <laughs> give me 300 bucks for it you know <laughs> no, but nobody, no, I haven't really heard any collector collectors like mention anything to me. I mean, my emails are easy to find. I'm easy to find on YouTube. Yeah. I'd be interested if anybody wants to give me any numbers or any info, especially info, because I've been dying to find out more about this thing. The Super Magnetic knows some, but he only knows so much too. Yeah. 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 I was hoping to actually have him on the show, um, but like I was saying a little earlier, he he said that he has the still a relationship with Sega and didn't really want to come on and and possibly, I guess. Uh, mess it up or whatever but um i'm glad you know we had you uh come on um but okay obviously this is like the the biggest find you've ever you've ever made uh during you know your your video game hunting and things like that what's some other really great finds that you've had uh, i found a sega nomad with the case Ooh. with the car charger and the battery case for eight bucks so oh wow sweet <laughs> and it's That's not really strategic it's just been sitting in the case i got a sealed zelda 64 for a dollar Oh, <laughs> that's pretty good as well. Yeah. Nice. Um, I found some pretty rare stuff, but those have to be, like, two of the biggest, like... Um, that's just... Uh, oh, well, I've actually got a question for you, because um, you mentioned in your video that the, the CD tray lid is broken. The catch is broken on it, basically. Did you yeah. do that, or was it already broken? No, no, no. When I got it, it was like that, and I think that's why the guy okay. didn't think it was worth anything. Uh, okay, yeah. I talked him down too because I went up to it and I was like, What's this? And he's like, Oh, I don't know. I think it's a VCR or something. I don't even think he knew what it was. <laughs> yeah, and I was oh, like, He's got me kicking himself. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and I was like, Okay, well, the lid's kind of broken. I was like, We take a block for it. He's like, Yeah, cool, whatever. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, and so I was like, oh, Okay, cool. I got this neat thing, whatever. You know, I went about my day. Man. And I, I just wonder how I actually got to the flea market in the first place. Like, because it. Sega have only made two of these. It's in prototype stage. They wouldn't have sold it to any stores or anything. So at some point, someone from Sega must have sneak, like, snuck it out of Sega. And like, yeah. it managed to wind it way up. It would be amazing to hear the whole story of that. But I guess we won't Well, know, I can so. ask it, and I'll get back to you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but here's the thing, though, because, I mean, he's in California, so it had to have come. It, it doesn't seem like it probably traveled very far from... Uh, Sega of America's offices because oh, they're yeah. based in San Francisco. Yeah, San Francisco to Stockton. Yeah. How, how far is that? That's not far at all. It's a good what two hours? Yeah, because well, I'm okay. about two hours. And Stockton's 45 minutes from me. Yeah, so it, it yeah. may have just been you know some guy who got it you know may have just like left it at home or something, and his mom could have sold it off or something. So it doesn't look like it it traveled very far. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's what the whole rumor thing is too. It's like, well, he made one. It's like, dude, I wish I was clever enough to make like, my own fake <laughs> yeah. pattern with the modem. <laughs> Man, that's hilarious. Have so, tried... oh, sorry. Oh, I, just... I think you're gonna ask the same that... question. Okay, what were you gonna ask? No, 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 you ask. I think we were trying to ask okay. the same question. Have you? I was just gonna say, have you tried actually tried? the modem thing on it at all. You know, I was just going to mention that right now, too. Okay. A lot of dudes are still rocking the Netlinks. And they oh, still play yeah. Doom and stuff online. They're like, dude, we oh, want to wow. play against you so bad. But I don't have any of the Netlink games. So if anybody oh, out there wants to send me one, yeah, email like, me. <laughs> I'll pay you for it, you know? I mean, I'm not trying <laughs> to get this for free, of, but... I think it was a version of Sega Rally they re-released with Netlink Edition on it, which I've always wanted to play. And yeah, Doom and... Yeah. I can't, can't think of them now, but yeah. Well, I already That's have a landline, which is funny too. You know what I mean? So I'd have to get the landline in order just to play. I mean, just the landline. Yeah, that's true. It's like it's like with the Dreamcast, really. Unless yeah, got the exactly. Adapter, but yeah, man, it'd be it'd be great if it is working. Like, because because obviously the actual Saturn side of it works, the standard playing of the game. So yeah. if everything, all the, everything inside works, then that's good. That's a great system. Well, I think it's cool to show the community too, because like I said, I'm just as hardcore about Sega as everybody else. To so see it, you know, go through the go through the lines and actually get played and yeah I think it'd be cool and I'd have been amazing if me and Chris could have clubbed together and got it for a special Sega Nerds one but yeah <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're going to stretch like $8,000 no I don't think we're going to be oh, all it's not going to make a couple bids and feel like it you know <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Um, so you're, you're telling me before you don't you, you actually don't have the Pluto with you right now is that right no I you know like I said I don't like having stuff worth that much in my house. I have it like in a safe deposit box right now. Seriously? Pretty bloody funny. hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's really funny because I asked him, I was like, well, I want to bring in this Sega. And they're like, what? I was like, yeah, like, I found this Sega that's really rare. And they kind of just looked at me. The other dude's like, like a Dreamcast? And I was like, before Dreamcast. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you have any games for it? And I was like, well, it's a prototype. So the games weren't really the important factor. Like, Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> That's that's brilliant though. I love it. <laughs> the fact that you've actually gone to the length to actually, you know, protect it basically. Yeah, yeah. It's just because really, a lot of people don't like. They're just looking at me like, you want to bring a video game system to a bank? Like, it's, I don't want to hold on to. It. I don't know. It's too paranoid. Like I said, just expensive. <laughs> Bad. Oh. <laughs> that's pretty. I just I love it. I love this whole this whole situation. It's it's fantastic. I, love, I think this is pretty good. I know, isn't it funny? It's just like like a running gag or something. Yeah, it's almost like a, some sort of cheesy eighties movie plot line right there. Oh, I know. Like, we can have Bernie. We can have Bruno's. I'm just hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> like everyone's after you because you've got this system. You've got to hide it in a safety deposit box oh, and stuff. <laughs> and like, the government girls just take us around the heavies. Like they got, it's got a prototype. We've got oh, to get it. Oh no! Jack on radio. No. <laughs> I would love it if the guy, the person who's actually put up like seven thousand dollars, is actually Sega. Like Sega, have actually gone. We need to get that back, but we can't tell anybody. Right? Make a big bid. That'd well, be that's awesome. The thing too is people want us to open them. Between oh, me really? and Super Magneto, Magneto, um, everybody's asking him to either mod it or open it. And I wouldn't touch yeah. that thing. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's why I haven't fixed the door because people are like, "Why does he just fix the door?" It's like. Yeah, I'm not, not going to do anything to it. That door's fine the way it is. It still works, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it takes this long. There's no reason in me chancing it at this point to fix the door. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Oh, that, well, was, like, guess... that, was, that was somebody else's argument, too. They are like, well, I give 10 Gs for it. Maybe the door is broken. It's like, oh, <laughs> you have that very hard to get because the door is broken. Yeah, no. Man. And you don't, I don't think you really need to open up because it's, from what I guess from from what I could read about it is basically is like the Saturn internals with the Netlink internals put into one box. It can't be. That yeah, it feels kind of hollow. People. And the left side is like where the most of the weight is. So it basically feels like the Saturns here, and like you said, the, the Netlink is just basically the same box. Yeah, so it can't be that interesting for people to see inside. I mean, it's awesome. The, the whole console on its own is awesome, but yeah. You don't need to open it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's why I did the comparisons, too. I have the Japanese Saturn and the American Saturn and even the Sega CD just to oh, yeah. show how big it is. I think that's cool. You know what I mean? Just seeing the size-by-size -size comparison. Yeah, it's quite impressive. It's just like yeah. almost like the first Xbox. is just so big. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so after uh, you end up selling it and, and finally, you know, it, it's leaving, I mean, how bad are you going to miss it? And, like, wh where do you want it to go? I mean, I mean, you've had it for so long. Where, where would you like to see it end up? I'd like it to go to a happy home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. no, I, you know, I, like 
because I'd really love for it to end up somewhere cool. Because there's like a traveling uh, video game museum history thing, isn't there? Mm-hmm. I've heard rumors or seen pictures, something like that, where they borrow stuff from collectors and they put it on display just to have old gaming consoles kind of on the road. People can go check them out. Yeah, I, that'd wow. be really cool. You know, I guess I really would like to get some kind of museum or something. I mean, there's only two. Just knowing yeah. these things exist is like you know cool. But being able to see and stuff, I mean. You know, man. we're all Sega fans, man. You know, we all want to see it. We all want to touch exactly. it and play yeah. it. Yeah, cause I think... Oh, where, there's actually, like, not a travelling museum. There's, there's a museum... I think it's a science museum in London. has, like, a video I, game section I, now, Maybe that's what it is. I know I've heard something about that. Because, yeah, I think that... I think they actually rent the items off people, so they actually would pay you for it. Like, but they keep it there, and they actually give you money for it. Something like that. I think that's the way it works. Something weird something like, like that. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that would have been awesome if you could do that. Like that way, you're getting paid basically, and it's because it's technically still yours. So you, yeah. they would be paying you to have it. Yeah, you trying to hook that up, dude. That'd be that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, anybody who knows anybody who's going through that, let me know. I mean, like I said, email me. I'm I'm open to suggestions. I just yeah yeah. <laughs> I think it was just going to be really interesting, like after, because I mean, it's it's just happened. Like all this has happened really. Fast. I mean, the first one it was like early last week, and then you brought yours out in the middle of the week. But I don't think Sega hasn't really had a chance to, you know, respond much at all. So it's going to be interesting to see if at one point Sega finally comes out and like, okay, here's the story of the Sega Pluto. This is what we're wanting to do with it. Uh, this is why we didn't end up bringing it out and that sort of thing. Because uh, I would, I would love to hear more of, of the backstory of about yeah. Pluto. Yeah, and I, I mean, I'm tempted to, to contact Sega or if they want to contact me. I just don't want all kinds of guys in suits trying to take it back from me or anything, you know. <laughs> I keep hearing rumors of, like, them. I mean, it's their intellectual property, you know. True, yeah. But, uh, yeah. It's, I guess it depends. It, it all depends on how it got out of the Sega, I guess. Like, if some, they legitimately gave it to one of their employees and said, look, we're not making this, take it home. Then, yeah. then it's all, Sorry, sure then it's all cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, because I mean, it's, it's, it's Sega kind of has a precedent of of combining systems like this. I mean, they had what is it, the Neptune that was essentially a Genesis and a 32x yeah. in one oh, system. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, but that was never released. So we know that they've toyed with with doing things like this in the past. Um, so I, I guess you know they were doing that with the uh, the next uh, generation with the with the Saturn. Um, oh, you know, I thought the, I thought the Neptune was released eventually, but only in like Mexico or someplace. So. I, I don't think it ever got released. Uh, okay. Hmm. Well, it might, there might be another prototype out there. Yeah, I mean, I've seen I've seen some. I believe I've seen a physical prototype, like a picture of one, or it may have been just uh, um, the maybe it was just I don't know, like a gra- yeah. Um, but it looked like a a really smaller like Genesis, like it was like more like flat and longer. Huh. I don't know. But it was just, I don't know, it's its pretty awesome. And I think the reason why they in, didn't end up doing anything with the Pluto is because obviously the Saturn didn't have that long of a life before Sega went ahead and pushed forward with the Dreamcast. Well, that I, I heard the modem's still 28.8, so with the Dreamcast, they went with the 6K anyway, so what would be the point? Yeah. Right. Hmm. But, uh, but I guess, well, speaking about that, that's literally... With so with the Dreamcast, that's what they did. They sort of must have seen. Oh yeah, we can actually put the actual uh, network adapter in this, okay, what, yeah. and then with their next system, like yeah, let's just do it. Let's go for it. And put the modem in straight away, because the PlayStation didn't have that, did it? The PlayStation Two, I mean, sorry. No, no, they had that uh, network adapter you get after the fact. The Final Fantasy. It, yeah, exactly. So like Sega were like. Because with this prototype, they were toying around with the idea, obviously, for it with Saturn. They must have thought, yeah. oh yeah, the Saturn's going to be finished soon anyway. Next system, let's do it. Let's go ahead with it. So that's that's a pretty cool bit of history there. Like, must have been the way it worked out, really. Yeah. Well, and I seen there's another sketch that somebody put up from an E3, I think from '96, and it's the same console I have, but it's white, and it's just a sketch of it. Uh, oh, oh, wow. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. It's called Blackout or something. Yeah, cause that you one might be able to Google image it. It's, it's Blackout or something. It's the same exact shape and everything. It's just white. I think the Saturn was originally called Black Bell. That's the code name they had for it. Okay, so maybe it's that really it. rings a bell. This Black Bell. Uh, yeah, and then I think the Dreamcast was like the Katana, and yeah, uh, the Sun- there, there's that, another yeah. one. Uh, so I was just looking up that yeah, Sega Neptune was planned for release, but didn't. For some reason, I thought they released it in in Mexico for some reason later. Cause you know they've got Tech Toy releasing Sega stuff in Me- Mexico still. 
Huh. Yeah, they got like the Genesis Four or something out there now because it's still, it's, face, it's still the same stuff. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> they keep remaking it. Well, they have, for some reason I thought they released out there, but apparently they haven't. Yeah. You know what though? I also have to think that like this was probably not even that big of a thing for Sega of Japan. It was probably more of a thing that Sega of America was working on, like maybe independently, because there's only two prototypes and they're both North American uh, um, systems. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, regional. Yeah, it's they're all region locks in North America, so you have to think that it's something that North America was working on at the time and not in Japan. So that's kind of kind of interesting too. And back yeah. then, North the North American, uh, I guess, headquarters of Sega had a lot more pull than they probably do now. I think most of all the big decisions are made in Sega of Japan. Back, yeah. Back then, yeah. Sega of America were doing a lot more stuff with it. Yeah. Yeah, because it seems to be it's the focus has very much shifted to Japan and London now, because um, because mm -hmm. Sega West is actually based in London now, um, whereas Sega okay. America, yeah, cause so Sega West actually has the whole of Sega Europe, Sega and Sega America involved with it under it. Um, hmm. so Sega America, as far as I'm aware, they don't have that many big decisions anymore. This is this is my understanding of how it was now working, but yeah, so it's Japan and London. <laughs> Man. <Yeah. laughs> All right, well. Roger, I want to thank you for coming on the show today. Um, where can people go to find out more about uh, the uh, the Pluto? Uh, like I said, go ahead, just check YouTube for Sega Pluto Zero One, or check the Game Gavel. There's a lot of info on that too. If I find any more info, I'll put it on either of those two. I've just anybody else knows anything, go ahead and contact me. I mean, I, I'm just as interested in everybody, as anybody else. You could be anonymous too. I won't put you on blast or anything. I just <laughs> just trying to that feel your... this. Part of history. Should we put out your Twitter, Twitter name there, or? Oh yeah, Twitter too. Like kidvid six six six. Cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll add that to our show notes so people can like click on the link as well. So yeah, kidvid six 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 for people who don't know. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Thanks again for coming on the show. Maybe we can have you back next week uh, after the auction has ended, and we can kind oh, of yeah. talk about the uh, the process on how you plan on getting this priceless piece of yeah. <laughs> video game system <laughs> to whoever bought it. That's gonna be yeah. A deal. Yeah, I know. I've been thinking about that too. I, I know. <laughs> As much as you do, but I'd be like, that's, that'd be cool. I I'd imagine cool. right now there's a team of Ocean Eleven people breaking into that like deposit box and like stealing the Pluto. So when you go to be at it, that's oh, I know. Right? I don't want this mind. money. I want this old prototype. <laughs> yeah. Old bars. You're gonna open up and it's like an old Atari Jaguar in there. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> it. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> awesome. Man. Well, good stuff, man. Thanks for coming on. Well, thank you for having me. Thanks. No, Take no it easy. You guys yeah. too. Yes. Cool. And there. I think okay. okay sweet. Awesome. That was great. Cheers. That worked out a lot better than I thought it would. <laughs> as far <laughs> as just just actually the the uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, oh. We've had people. We've had people on the show in the past, and it's always sometimes it's got a bit because we don't really know them. But yeah, no, that was fantastic. So yeah. Well, I mean, um, just the, the logistics of with the internet. I just was I, I okay. was just waiting for something bad to happen because I don't have uh, the best internet right here. Yeah. Um, so that was awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm glad yeah. uh, we were able to have uh, Roger on the show, and yeah. and uh, it'll be it'll be cool. I'm really interested in in following the story and. Seeing how much this thing's going to go for, because I think I have a feeling it's going to go for more than ten thousand. Yeah, but judging by how quickly it just shot up, <laughs> uh, like, I still can't believe it's like over seven thousand, seven thousand six hundred. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I mean, you got to think that, um, like, was it Nintendo World Championship? I think that's probably one of the rarest games and around, and it regularly goes for more than twenty thousand dollars. So, which game's that? Nintendo World Championship. Oh, I actually and don't know that game. It's an NES game that they uh, this okay. incredibly low production. I think it's I don't I don't want to even say how many carts were were produced, but it's not very much. But uh, okay. from I know that the uh, the Pluto has to be way more rare. I mean, there's only two of them made, so <laughs> yeah. Um, and Brilliant. the fact that it actually still works and everything too. So um, that yeah. that has something to do with it. So anyway, uh, let's get on to our next topic. Um, I want to talk about um, Big Blue, the Kickstarter campaign that Ed Annunziata has created. Of course, he is the original creator of Echo the Dolphin, so he is using Kickstarter to fund a spiritual successor uh, to that game. It's called Big Blue. Um, unfortunately, it just hasn't been very successful. I think uh, right now 
it's about fifty-two thousand dollars in pledges, and they had a six hundred sixty-five thousand dollar goal. So there's, I think there's like four or five days left. Eight days. I'm sorry. Seven to go. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, so it'd seven be seven. On yeah, it would be seven today because it was eight yesterday. Um, so anyway, Ed uh, okay. put out an update last night, uh, essentially saying that uh, he knows that this one's not going to be successful, and he thinks one of the reasons is because people just can't play the game. They they don't. He thinks that people can't really understand his vision for the game. And when we actually interviewed Ed at GDC, he he told us a story, and it's essentially the same thing. When he was pitching Echo the Dolphin to Sega uh, reps back in the day, they weren't very enthusiastic about the game that he was trying to make. But he said, you know, just give me a little bit of time. I'm going to come back with um, a, a playable build of the game, and then I'll show it to you then. And he said it was only after that that he brought it back and showed them that they really understood what he was talking about. So I think it's kind of the same thing that he thinks that people just aren't really understanding what he's trying to achieve. So what he's going to do is he's going to go back and he's going to create a smaller build of the game, and this is called Little Blue. It's going to be completely free, and uh, players are going to have, uh, you're going to get a fully controllable dolphin, uh, another creature, which is going to be song mechanics that actually play a big role in the game, uh, two big environments and your own private ocean environment. So basically it's just going to be, a, it, from what it sounds like, a small demo of the game, essentially. Um, once he does that, he's going to put Big Blue back up on Kickstarter with a smaller uh, goal and work his way up from that. He's going to also have some uh, more clear like uh, um, pledge goals and rewards and a, a more... Uh, uh, provide, I guess he said, more clarity on on the scope and detail of what the game's going to be. So, you know, it kind of sucks that, you know, it doesn't look like this game's going to get funded right now, but I don't know. I, I'm hoping that this next go-around will be more successful. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, because it's, it's kind of sad in a way that, like, uh, he's, had, he's pretty much, had, as you sort of mentioned, he's having to do exactly the same thing he, as he did with the original Do Echo Dolphin. He went to Sega initially and sort of said, "Look, I've got this great idea." They went, "Nah." And so, he went, look, look, just give me some time. I will, I will make this game basically on my own. Because he say he did basically did it on his own time, basically originally. Uh, like, no, I don't think made, so. Okay, well, he sort of made it as far as when he, when he was speaking to us, because we had an interview with him. He sort of said that he he actually went back and made part of the game or made made the game basically, and when had to had to go back again to Sega and say, "Though, yo." This is what I'm talking about, <laughs> and they're like, "Oh yeah, actually, yeah, yeah no, we'll, we'll make this for you. We'll publish for this for you." So yeah, he's still having to do the same thing again. It's kind of, it sounds almost like history's repeating itself. It's like people haven't really got the idea, like behind it, and they're like, "Ah, we don't really think it's going to work." And they're having to do the same again. But in a way, this could be really good because he said he's going to try and make a slice of the game, and he said it's going to be free. So that's going to get a lot of interest. People are going to be, well, if well, hopefully the game's good. If the game turns out to be good. People are going to be like, yes, Big Blue. So in the end, he might actually end up with more than the 665000 that he wants. It could it could be the next Ouya. Who knows? He could get millions for it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of... I just I kind of feel it must be very frustrating for Ed. But, um, yeah, we'd like to, like to see what he can bring us because uh, I'm definitely interested in Little Blue or even Big Blue when it finally gets around to it. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see what ends up happening. But like like what you said, I think it's probably gonna be for the best um, because you know I, I think some of the Kickstarter did have some problems with it. It was just it wasn't very clear on like exactly what you're gonna do. I mean, because at first people thought it was gonna be an MMO, then people thought it was gonna be online based, like like you'd be able to do online uh, co-op, or then it was gonna be like a, a completely offline single player game. So initially, I think there was some confusion going around on like what exactly the game was going to end up being. Um, so I think this next go-around, I think he's learned a lot from his first experience with it, and I think he's going to be able to come back, and the next campaign is going to be a lot better and more clear. Um, and we're going to continue to, you know, um, cover the game, the next campaign, when it comes comes around, and I really hope that we can actually get him on the show at some point. Yeah, that, that would be really good. Yeah, we can... Yeah, really. <laughs> Really get, we can really get an idea of what he really wants from the game then, that, that mm -hmm. way, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah, and one of the cool things is that he's actually just got an Oculus Rift development kit, so he's looking at ways how he can implement that into the next game, too. So that would be pretty cool to have some like virtual reality-type um, tech in there. 
Yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah, see, see where it goes, I guess. Yeah, yeah you can actually. He's he's also set up in the meantime. He's set up a forum uh, that you can go and actually start sharing some ideas um, and actually you know interface with Ed. So those forums are at www.playkimmy and that's p l a y c h e m y dot forum b and it's us. Uh, it's forum and then b e e dot com. So um, we'll we'll also post up a, a link to it in the show notes as well. Um, with that, but yeah, so good luck to you, Ed, and the rest of the guys over there. Hopefully, yeah. this next one will be a little bit more successful. Let's hope so. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> All right, Graham, I think you had uh, the next piece of news in here that you want yeah. to talk about. Yeah. Um, it's not, uh, it's quite a sm- this one's quite a small thing, but um, if you're into your Sega clothing or just video game clothing in general, good news because Se- there's more Sega clothing coming away. Um, we met. We spoke about the Sega Kawaii. Um, it's a new sort of, um, I guess, clothing brand from Sega. Basically, they 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 popped up on Facebook recently and said, "Yeah, we're launching soon." And they they had a picture of a massive Dreamcast backpack, which looks really awesome. Um, but now they've actually released um, more of their clothing range. Basically, and it's got um yeah, it's got like a. There's they seem to because because well the thing is Sega Kawaii basically means cute, Sega cute, and it's kind of cutesy clothing, and it sort of seems more tailored towards uh, ladies, <laughs> I guess, um, but I guess guys could also buy it as well, but they've got um, like a, um, a Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive vest top, which says 16 bits across it, um, they've got a Dreamcast t-shirt, we've got a cool sort of hand-drawn Dreamcast, they've got, um, a, uh, I think it's meant to be a Mega Drive controller. Uh, well, Genesis controller, the six-button version, but another T-shirt with that on it. Um, so yeah, basically they're they're releasing a, a range of um, the stuff, which is really cool, which we're really interested in. And at the same time, Sega and Insert Coin, um, who hopefully people know, they they do a lot of sort of nerdy type T-shirts, like for video games and other franchises and stuff. Um, Sega's teamed up with them for another range of stuff, um, and that includes um, some stuff for the ladies. Again, we've got some pretty crazy uh, Sonic the Hedgehog leggings which actually look really awesome. I want to go <laughs> those for my wife. Yeah, I, kind I of showed her that. I showed them to her and she was like where the hell would I wear those at? And I, was like, I don't know. <laughs> where around the house? I think that'd be kind of hot. <laughs> they look really good because they've basically got a um, green hill zone like just they could see like the palm trees and like the, the the blue sky and the clouds and stuff. It looks really awesome like all the way up the leg. Um so that looks really good, and they're also releasing. Uh, let's have a look. They're they're re. Okay, I've actually got this T-shirt, which I was going to wear tonight, but I can't find it right now. Um, but they released a little while ago um, a Jet Set Radio T-shirt, which was the T-shirt that Beat the character wears in Jet Set Radio, and it says actually says Beato across the front, which actually well in Japanese is Beat. Um, but yeah, it's written in Japanese. Um, but they're re-releasing that. But it's like the the Sonic and Sega Sonic and All Stars Racing transformed version and it's actually got like a it's got basically um what looks like a vinyl on the back with like also with tire marks on it so it's meant to be like the something i can say all stars racing transformed um version so that that's what they have re-released they've also got an um got, yeah sorry i'm having to re- re-zoom in on this <laughs> they've got <laughs> a, a, a sonic the hedgehog themed one which says basically on it it's it says like green hill zone south island on it um so it's not too, for most people, it's not too. It's not. It hasn't got big Sonic on it, so you can like wear it out and not get the crap kicked out of you if you if you go to those sort of places. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they've got like a Knuckles uh, themed hoodie. Um, they've got a pretty cool like red T-shirt, which actually has like little, almost like baby style booties. You know, like you get that hang down, but that's actually Sonic the Hedgehog shoes, basically. Um, I hate hanging down. Oh, no, it would be knuckles. awesome if they knuckles. actually made real baby booties for with Sonic the Hedgehog. That would be awesome, yeah. <laughs> that would be cool. I could also get a Space Channel 5 vest. Uh, yeah, they've got a whole load of stuff. Basically, yeah, and they've got Tails t-shirts and other things. So, yeah, great. New, there's a great range of clothing that's coming out to the Sega theme, both from Sega Kawaii and also from Insert Coin. So we'll put the links up for those and check them out because uh, they actually look pretty decent. Uh, um, yeah, <laughs> I might have to invest in some myself. Um Cool. You'll have to um, wear the the leggings during the podcast. Oh yeah, yeah if I get I <laughs> you have <Man>. to. Okay, <laughs> see my man bulge. That's what you do. <laughs> just just hang it out there. It's like I'm wearing nothing at all. <laughs> I'll be okay. I'll be like David Bowie in um, Labyrinth, if you remember that. Oh god, that's terrible. <laughs> What's funny is that uh, 
I took my daughter to Otakon this past year. That's the uh, like the biggest, one of the biggest anime conventions in North America. And there was a girl dressed as David Bowie in <laughs> Labyrinth, and she also had like a bulge going on. She like put something down there, and she had this gigantic bulge. That is fantastic. Funny. <laughs> a girl at work, I know. It's, like she, she said, "Oh my god!" The first time I saw Labyrinth, like I, I started as a woman, and after it ended. No, we sat down. I just ruined that completely. She said, she said, I started watching the movie as a girl, and when it finished, I was a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> should, we just, should we just move on, I think? Yeah, just keep um, going. You ruined yeah, that whole bit. Yeah. Asshole. Sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you love it. Um, and there's a pretty. Okay. In, there's a new Sonic game that's coming out. But don't get too excited. Well, you can do a little bit. Uh, it's not for game home consoles. It's for the arcade. And by the looks of it, it's only going to be in Japan, at least for now. And it's in, it's not coming uh, out of Japan. This thing's not going. <laughs> yeah, probably not to be honest. <laughs> um, but basically, it's at Tokyo's Joyopolis Center, um, which is like a, if you don't know, it's like a massive multi-story arcade place. Basically, um, pretty impressive stuff. There's a new Sonic arcade game called uh, Sonic Athletics, and as far as we can tell, it's all sort of kind of based on the running event from uh, Sonic and Mario Olympic Games, but without any of the Mario characters. Um, but the the key thing about this game is it literally makes you run as a. <laughs> it's essentially it, a treadmill. It is a tre- yeah, it's a treadmill in front of a screen. Um, but, it's, but it's got uh, it's, I think it's eight 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 treadmills lined up together, so they're all net linked together basically. Um, and net linked. As far as we can, I like that. Oh yeah, <laughs> they're all. Uh, they all, um, as far as we can tell, that each machine is for a different character. Well, we're not entirely sure on that. We've only had seen screenshots of, like, pictures of it so far. Um, and they've, yeah, got basically got Sonic above one, Tails above the other, Knuckles above the other one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're in on a treadmill, and the faster you run, the faster your character on screen runs. Um, and it actually says um, in a really dodgy translation, because uh, I, I had to end up using Google on this. Um, it is recommended for those who lack of exercise usually feeling, um, which I believe <laughs> means if you're fat, you what they want you to use it. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, uh, if you if you feel like you need some exercise, get on this treadmill, have have some fun, and I think that's awesome because. Uh, I think there's a way that you can cheat in this game too, because I, I I assume there's probably like a button that you can press to make it go faster, like a regular treadmill. What if you do that and then just put your legs on the side? <laughs> <laughs> it's not on the belt and you can just go that way that, that would be a great way I d- I, yeah that's the thing I'm not sure how they're going to do that maybe it's maybe it's a special type of treadmill that when you run then the treadmill starts to move like it won't it won't do maybe it that, would be, that would be pretty cool because I remember we cheated all the time on was it the uh, like Olympic Games or whatever for the NES you remember that back in the day you had like a little pad and you could run oh, yeah. And then you'd run and then jump off the whole pad for the long jump and then wait. Your guy would be like sailing in air and then you jump back on and then you go really far <laughs> in the long jump. Or then we used your hands to run because your hands could move a lot faster than your feet could. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I no? never actually had that game, so I don't know. <laughs> oh, that game was awesome. Yeah, I only got my my NES in 2003 and it doesn't work. I got it from Australia because I was in Australia at the time. Came back home and was like, "Yes, I can finally hook it up." No, it doesn't work. So, uh, yeah. Brilliant. Is it like region locked, or is it just the whole thing doesn't work? Oh, it just doesn't boot up. Um, but it cost me three dollars, three Australian dollars, which at the time was a pound. So, if if it if it turned out to be like a really rare NES console, then um, I'd be just like um, Kidvid six 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 that we just had on <laughs> oh, it was a special rare console. But no. Um, and then you have people work. wanting to talk to you. Oh yeah! Right now, thinking, uh, I I don't even want to talk to yeah, you. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I have to force you on this show. <laughs> to join me, come on! <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, new Sonic Arcade game coming out. If you happen to be in Japan or you fancy a holiday to Japan, go and check it out in Tokyo. Draw up for this. It, it looks pretty, It looks like it could be a cool thing, but uh, it's just really sad that in the West, arcades is completely dead pretty much nowadays. Well, I think there some arcades are making a comeback with the whole really? barcade scene. Yeah, this is. Um, you, do you remember the idea I had? That it's is what I'm saying. Yeah, but... Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. No, a long time ago, before the barcade scene came about, this was like seven years ago probably, Graham literally had that same idea. He was like, I want to move to America and open up a video game, like an arcade where you served alcohol. 
alcoholic drinks that yep. you could play, like not just arcades, but I mean, you'd have actual like consoles and stuff yeah. set up too. And, and also, my idea was that you could either just go just play like you would normally, or it could be like a gym where you pay like a monthly membership, and when you do that, you get to play on the games completely free of charge, like all the arcade games and stuff. So you could literally be sitting there on Daytona USA all day, going, yeah, just cruising along. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, yeah, was my crazy idea at the time. I think it could still work in a way, but yeah, we need the money to actually fund it. Let's get, let's start a Kickstarter. Yes, let's do this. That's a good right. idea. Yeah, but um, okay. Other otherwise, yeah. Moving on. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty much the end of our main news. Um, there's some other stuff that, but it's kind of old news now. But um, we're, it's community community news now, which we're talking about other things of. Like going on with other Sega websites, Sega fan sites, really. Um, and we're like big fans of, and we want to sort of help support what they're doing, really. Um, first of all, which is actually, this is kind of newsy, but um, yeah, we're, we're putting in fans, fan site stuff. Um, the Dreamcast Junkyard, which is like pretty much one of the best Dreamcast websites out there, really. I mean, you've got some other great ones like DC Scene and stuff, but uh, Dreamcast Junkyard. Almost as good as Dreamcasters Realm. Oh yeah, that was the one. <laughs> Why do we keep that going, man? This could be us right now. Uh, I haven't actually told people what is going on. The Dreamcast Junkyard is going to be preserved for future generations. It's going to be basically it's going to be catalogued by the British Library for Cultural History. Um, there's like there's, there's quite a few. Here's the thing: they were the British Library announced on the BBC. Uh, when was it? I can't even remember now. It's like it's like a week or so ago. Maybe it was less than a week ago. Um, but basically, they announced uh, a list of a hundred websites that they are going to preserve and like keep for like future generations. So they're never going offline. Basically, I mean, well, you know, it basically, if the Dreamcast Junkyard closes down, every single post they've got is going to be remain in the history, like in history books, basically. Um, and they had massive, massive websites like eBay, Twitter, Facebook, you know, really big websites. And then down and towards the bottom of the list, Dreamcast Junkyard, and people are like, what, really? No. The Dreamcast Junkyard, the one that we're all familiar with. Click on the link they have, and yes, it's actually the Dreamcast Junkyard. Um, and the guys from Dreamcast Junkyard didn't even know about it as well, because I as if as if a couple of days after we posted up, they suddenly like posted up going, "Oh, we've just been told that we're going to be preserved. That's awesome." <laughs> so they weren't even told about it, which is really odd, I think. But um, yeah, that's awesome because they've been going for quite a while. It's, it is basically they, they've been talking about the Dreamcast for so long, and all the indie games are coming out and stuff, and. It's fantastic news, really. They're, um, yeah, so they're going to be around for a for a very long time. What do you think, Chris? Any any thoughts? What? <laughs> oh, <God damn> it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know you can hear me. <laughs> um, no, I, I went and got I went and got some water. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I was basically saying, like, what do you think about it? Like, are you like me? Do you think it's just awesome that they're? Yeah. No, I think it's it's certainly pretty cool. It's it's. It's funny because I think whoever made the decisions on doing that obviously was some sort of Sega nerd, like some Sega <laughs> fan, to do that. It's pretty funny. I mean, I bet it's like they each had to pick like a certain website or something, and he's like, "Hey, I want this this one to go up there," and they're like, everyone else is like, "What is that?" No one else knows what a Dreamcast is, but um, I think it's, yeah. I think yeah, I think it's pretty awesome though. Um, and I can understand why they wouldn't want to put like eBay and Twitter and everything else like that. I mean, you're if you're trying to preserve something that that shows like your culture and the diversity within that, I mean, I don't see why you would want to put like a, an online auction site on there. Uh, you'd want to actually find something that originated in the United Kingdom and is actually like pretty successful and, and interesting and um, a really, you know, um, committed and dedicated uh, video game uh, fan site could be certainly one of those things. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um... Yeah, so, well, congratulations, Dreamcast Junkyard. It's awesome. Um, yeah, don't know what else to say about that. Brilliant. <laughs> just just yep. when, you, when you're old and, you're, and it's like all the other websites have shut down, you can go to your grandkids and go, look, Dreamcast Junkyard. Remember that, kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, another, another awesome thing. Uh, Radio Sega, we love these guys, uh, they are they're going to be hosting a 24-hour fundraiser for charity, basically. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, and they ha held one a couple of years ago. Is there any one they've done so far? I think it was yeah, November 2011. Yeah, it was it, called Segathon. Yeah, um, and it raised nearly £750 for BBC's Children in Need campaign, which is, a, it's, if you don't know about it, it's an annual event we have in, in the UK called Children in Need. They have, like, 
they actually it's a really big thing they have like a massive tv show that goes on all, all for 24 hours basically um and has like celebrities and stuff on it doing crazy things sometimes they do dares to help raise money and stuff um and people just phone in and raise stuff but other people are encouraged to do their own activities like a fun run or whatever or 24 hour um like you know sega radio station basically but they're doing it again um this year and it's gonna be on Mar- oh, no may the 24th um and this time the, the proceeds are gonna be donated to cancer research uk um but yeah, and it's I think it's going to be a pretty awesome thing. So if if you want to help them out and maybe help them raise some money, then check it out. It's yeah, going to be awesome. Again, we'll we'll have a link link in our um, post at, at the end of this. So yeah, but great stuff, guys. And anything we can do to help, just let us know because we're big fans. So yeah, great stuff. Um, one last thing about community stuff, and I, I sort of kind of promised to give a shout out to. Um, Mr. Whistles on Twitter um, is at Mr. Whistles, and you spell that Mr. Uh, M R. Then Whistles is W I S T L E S, so it, does, it loses the H <laughs> um, that you have a normal whistle. But um, basically, this is probably one of the biggest Sega nerds ever. Um, he, accor- well, according to one of his Twitter posts he did a week ago or so, um, he's basically got every single Sega game ever made except for one which is sonic two in one on the game gear and that's that is actually it's a car it's a game which is a one cartridge which had sonic the hedgehog 2 for the game gear and sonic spinball for the game gear in one cartridge um the key thing that he needs though is that he wants a boxed version he's like basically he can find the game in the manual quite easily well reasonably easily on like ebay and other sites but um, he really wants the box version because every gun he's got is box, and he's he's got he's posted up a picture of like his collection. And it's just like his room is just filled with Sega games across the floor. It's fantastic. But um, yeah, he's still. I I tweeted him just before the show. He's still trying to find the game. Um, no, he, he actually he, he actually put out a tweet saying, "Yeah, one night with my wife if you can get me this game." Basically, so he's offering his <laughs> wife out there to to people. <laughs> so. Yeah, if you if you know of anyone who's got a copy of this with the box, um, or you know you've seen it around, let him know. Um, so this game is at Mr Whistles. Um, just let him on on Twitter, and yeah, good luck to him because uh, finishing that that awesome collection is going to be amazing. So yeah, great That's stuff. Cool. I heard this funny story one time where I guess this guy was really in an EverQuest, and what he would do is he would post up like uh, things on Craigslist and say that like if you would give him like in-game money or, or like in-game items that you could come and have sex with his wife. Oh my god. And, and he did it a lot. Like people would come over <laughs> and yeah and have sex with his wife and I guess she's his all wife. down for it. Wow okay yeah it's just <laughs> that, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah so um, I don't would know. Would you ever consider doing that with Jamie? <laughs> I would not you, do that. No, nope, no. Nope. You got addicted He's, to um, well, when Fantasy Star Online Two comes out, you might you might get addicted to that and you know need some in-store in-game like money. I would offer your <laughs> anal virginity for uh, if if Sega would just go ahead and bring over PSO two to the states. <laughs> I I would accept. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. They're meant to be bringing it over. They keep delaying it, which is really annoying. <laughs> yeah, I, <know>. I, <laughs> uh, um, I don't want to play. Uh, game for ages. Um, anyway, yeah, um, yeah. That, that's the community news. Um, yeah, moving on, Chris. I, I did a uh, question of the week on Twitter earlier today, and we got a few uh, a few responses that I want to talk about, and then you and I can kind of talk about this a little bit. Um, basically, I asked the question of what was the better RPG, Grandia Two or Skies of Arcadia? These are both uh, classic Dreamcast RPGs, and br- really, back in the day, this was a huge discussion. Um, you know when these games were released because uh, they were really the uh, the the only like high profile uh, traditional you know single player offline RPGs. Uh, there were a few others that came out, but these were the big ones. So people talked a lot like what was better. Um, and so I'm going to read a couple of these uh, real quick, and then uh, Grandma, I'll get your take. So. At uh, Gabrielle Brawler said uh, both great games, but Skies of Arcadia is one of the greatest. JRPGs ever made. So that's one for Skies of Arcadia. Hypersonic X 2011 said, Oh, don't make me choose. Hashtag Dreamcast. Enough said. And at Bo- Bojo's Bazaar 
said, I love them both. Hard choice, but in my opinion, son, or Skies of Arcadia, I was going to say Sons of Anarchy. I said, I saw, <laughs> S- I saw SOA. Uh, so Skies of Arcadia was better. Longer, hard, or had shit battles, the crew slash base thing. And I felt like I was an explorer. Um, Graham, I'll let you uh, answer now, and then I'll, I'll give you my take. I literally, okay, this is like the easiest question for me because uh, there's no no choice. Skies of Arcadia all the way. Um, I own Grandia 2. I actually own it on the Dream... Well, no, wait. I don't own it on Dreamcast anymore. My friend stole it off me, basically. My <laughs> ex-friend. I haven't spoken Oh, yeah, that's what I was saying. I was like, I, was like, I wouldn't <laughs> see he's a friend. I, know, I, I was friends with him, and then we sort of had a falling out, and he still got my copy. So, yeah, good on him. Thanks, Rob. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, but I've got it on the PS2 as well, because it came out on the PS2 a bit later. Um, and, I, yeah, I own Skies of Arcadia. I... Basically, Grandia 2 I've always wanted to like, and I've seen like videos of it that made me sort of think, this looks really awesome, but I can never get into it, and I don't know why. I kept, I started about 10 times, I did the same little bit over and over again, it's like, uh, yeah, I can't, I couldn't get into it, I don't know what it was, but Skies of Arcadia, exactly like what um, Bojo's Bazaar from Twitter said there, he felt like an explorer, that's exactly what I felt like with the game, it was like, once you get past the first initial level, whatever, and you get your ship, for the first time, you actually get to go and explore this world. You're flying around a world, basically. I mean, back then, like, you didn't really get anything like that. Um, yeah, it was, it was just awesome. It, yeah, if, if you think, like, um, I guess, like, it's like what, what people must have felt like on a Wind Waker, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. Like, for the first time, when they get in that little boat and they get to travel to different islands, that's basically what it was like on this. And also, my favorite RPG of all time is Panzer Dragoon Saga, where, you, yeah, you're flying around on the back of a dragon basically this was like my dreamcast version of Panzer Dragoon Saga. I thought, yes, this is awesome. The ship battles were fantastic. Um, the only thing I don't like about the game is the random battles and how frequent they got at points. Like, you'd, pretty much all your team would be dead. You just defeated some big monster. You walk two steps, suddenly you win to another battle. You're like, oh, come on. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is so frustrating. Or oh, you can see, like, your goal just, like, just there. Just, just like, a few more steps. And then, <laughs> Into the, into the battle and it's just that really kind of annoyed me but all the characters are brilliant as I say the ship battles are loved just the storyline as well because um, going on going into it a bit more <laughs> basically if you don't know about it you're sort of well do you know what it's been so long I've literally forgotten exactly what you're collecting <laughs> it has been so long since I've played game but you're collecting these items basically as far as I remember now you're defeating monsters that's it oh my god <laughs> the, yeah again yeah it's been so long since I played it even though I love it um, but basically you're doing the same thing over and over again sort of like you're going into different areas and doing stuff and I was like after the third one I was like okay if we're going to be doing this for like three or four more it's actually going to get kind of boring but literally as I, just as I said that that a cutscene where like the Empire comes in and basically completely changes everything around so the rest of the, the, rest of the game is completely different to the first like hour or so or whatever or not hour but like a couple of hours but yeah I just it had like little twists and turns I didn't expect in the storyline brilliant and the ending was fantastic um, which again I can't fully remember I just remember being so happy when I completed it and that's why I know I love the game <laughs> um, but yeah um, wow I have to I have to play that this week yeah because I've forgotten it. basically I've forgotten it so yeah yeah um, what about you? <laughs> I've actually been in the the other side of things. I preferred Grandia Two, and um, I, I now I love Skies of Arcadia. I thought it was a great game for all the same reasons that you did. I really liked it. But uh, for me, when I first played uh, Grandia Two, I was just completely blown away because I had never played a game before that point where it had uh, the the voice acting in that game was actually phenomenal. It was really well done, and I just I that was back when you know really bad voice acting was kind of the norm in video games. Yeah. Like you're just used to it being very bad. Uh, and so when I started playing that, and I heard that you know these this voice acting is actually really well done. I was it just like helped me like get deeper, you know, connected with the game. Uh, the battle system was was really good too. Uh, there was just it never felt repetitive. Like it was always like you could combine attacks with your teammates and you know, everything was like moving around. You just didn't feel like you were just sitting there just waiting to press a button like you do with so many other video games. Um, and so there was a, a lot of strategy involved um, in every single battle. So, it, you know, every every little battle, even if it's just like you're, you're fighting these, you know, just random, like, you know, small, uh, weak creatures, they were still fun. You know, they 
still had a lot of fun to it. And I just really liked the characters, too. Uh, I, I thought um, the main character was really great. All the supporting characters, I, I can't remember their names now, um, but I, I really liked the, the lead-in uh, to uh, you know, the, the final boss. And what's funny is that I remember I had the game for a long time, and then I ended up selling off my whole Dreamcast collection. I'm sure you remember me doing that a couple times, I Graham. Still, I still hate you for that. <laughs> well, here, here's what happened. Uh, so I wanted to, to play Grandia 2 again, and I remember one of my friends gave me like a bunch of burned games that he had. So I was like, all right, you know, I want to go back and, and play it. So I started in an, uh, I started playing the game, and I got to the final disc. I think, I think there was like a, it was a three or four disc game. I can't remember for sure. But I got to the final disc, and I was in like going up to defeat the last boss. Like in this, at that part, you're like inside the boss, like going through his body. Um, and what started happening was every time I got to a cutscene, it would just skip the cutscene and go right to the next part. Like it would show like one second of the cutscene and then just go to the part right after that. So the way that whole the storyline unfolded in that game it was pretty much all through like full motion video cutscenes. So I was missing out on like all these really key points at the very end of the game and I was like, <laughs> oh God. And so I tried to restart it and play it again with the save and it did the same thing again. So I was like, man, I'm just going to have to quit playing it because now this is like going to ruin the, comp the game for me completely. So I actually was never able, I never ended up finishing the game. So I really need to go back and do that. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I think Grandia 2, I would have to go with that. But I can certainly understand why people said Skies of Arcadia. I wouldn't, um, you know, think you're crazy, you know, in any way for, for thinking that. So yeah. Well, so yeah, a bit, of a, a bit of a divide there, but I think amicable. Yeah. Um, one yeah. of the things that I want to do, Graham, um, what was, what was the uh, the name of our old feature where we would um, play an old game? Was it the 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 flashback? Wasn't it? Something like that. Yeah, the flashback. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a Sega flashback. So I think we're gonna bring that back this week. Uh, so essentially, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna post up um, a classic Sega video game on the site. It's gonna be um, it's gonna be on the sidebar. It's gonna be our poll. What we're gonna do. I probably could have saved this for later in the show, but since I'm thinking about <laughs> okay. it, I'll, gotcha. now, I'll forget. Um, so we're going to let it run for a week. So we're going to start today and run till maybe next Friday. And whatever game wins, then Graham and I are going to play that the following week, and then we're going to talk about it on the show. Just kind of give like a little flashback uh, of, of the game. So um, Graham, we'll have to think of some games that we can play. Um, probably all Dreamcast yeah. games. And okay. Some yeah. of the games uh, that I brought here with me. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah. It's gonna have to be games we both own then, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we'll, oh. we'll have to figure it out. Um, I did bring a lot of video games. Let me see. Hang on. Let me see what video games I have. Okay. Hang on a second. Okay. Well, this show is brought to you by Waitrose Tangy Refreshing Smooth Orange Juice. Yeah. Uh, tastes really good. Tell you that much. <laughs> okay, um, Chris is back. Good. I just put the silence. We're talking about orange juice. Carry on. Okay, so here's the games. I'll I'll, I'll show them because I brought a whole case with me. The thing that sucks is, like I said last week, that uh, I still haven't been able to get a composite cable for my PlayStation Three. So I've just been playing Dreamcast, and that's okay. So I have Sword of the Berserk, a Carrier. Yes. yes. I have to hold this up for you. I'll uh, say yes every game I've got. Silver, which is a really awesome no, game. I like that. I uh, don't. Have that. Uh, Ill bleed. What's that? Ill, oh, Ill bleed. Uh, no, sorry. No. Nope. Uh, okay. Uh, Chronicles of Pern Dragon Riders. Yes, I've got that. <laughs> uh, Echo of the Dolphin. Yep. Defender of the. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I love that uh, game. Record of Lotus War. Mm. No, I don't. I don't think we got that over here. We might have done. I don't really remember it. It's basically like a um. I think like Baldur's Gate style thing, like a yeah. like a dungeon thing. So um, and then yeah, so that's the only and, oh Super Magnetic Neo. It's actually in my Dreamcast right now. Oh, I don't have that. Yeah. Oh no. damn it! So yeah, the first year, like, Sorry, dude. Yeah, um, I think I've got so. a demo disc with it, on, and I can play the demo. <laughs> no, we don't want to do that. I brought all these great like I brought all these great Sega games. That I really wanted to end up beating. Um, Was it? Uh, Vikings Battle for Asgard. I want to play through that. Oh, I had, uh, Vanquish. I wanted to beat Bayonetta while I'm here. 
Uh, the, yeah. the first uh, Yakuza game on the PS2. So, oh well. It's kind of a bummer. You, you got to get that cable, then. I do. I need to get oh. cable. I was going to say you don't need the cable. You've got a Dreamcast. But if you're going to play Sega games, then get the cable, man. Because those I are know, some awesome, awesome games you just mentioned. Yeah, so we'll um we'll we'll figure out um like four games that we'll put up there and we'll we'll actually do it right after this. That way we can get people voting on it. Um so we'll do that and then we'll talk about the game. It'll be fun. Um Yeah. Uh really quickly let's talk about what we've been playing this week. Graham, you go first. Okay. Uh well yeah, pretty much the only game I've really been sort of investing time in is Hell Yeah. Um, Hell yeah. That's the way to say it. Um, yeah, on the Xbox Live Arcade, I got that version. Uh, not that there's any difference as far as I'm aware on the, between PSN and Xbox Live Arcade, but yeah. Um, yeah, the thing is, I never actually, when it first came out, because we didn't have Sega Nerds up and running at the time, we'd closed down the site at that point, um, so we didn't really bother, need to bother to actually get it. <laughs> um, but it came out. Um, and I, I bought really, it when it came out. Oh, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly you're a better Sega nerd than I am. I, I just didn't have the money to buy it full price, but it went onto the Xbox Live Arcade sale um, last week, and yeah, it's like super cheap, so it's just like, yeah, getting that. Um, cause we, we Well, the thing is, Chris and I actually played it um, before it came out at, oh God, before, where did we go to? Oh God, it was PAX like, East we, we, last year. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, last year's PAX, PAX East. Um, so we actually got to play it. Um, and yeah, it, well, I enjoyed it back there. Just couldn't really afford it when it came out over here. But um, yeah, really enjoying it. It's uh, yeah, I can't be. Oh, actually, there is one thing I wanted to ask you, Chris, and maybe some other people might know as well. When we were playing at PAX East, when we we're talking to like, like the sort of developer guy who was actually there, um, he was talking about how the whole thing is that um, yeah. You're, you're the Prince of Hell and everything, and you've been caught with a sex... There's like a sex tape of you that's got out or something like that. Yeah, is that yeah. Right? yes. Yeah. In the American version, is it still the sex tape? Um, I don't... I thought that the, it was like basically showed him... Ta- like someone took pictures of him playing with like a rubber ducky or something like that. Yeah, back. yeah, that's what it turned out to be on like the UK one. I, 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 I don't know mm-hmm. if they, they would release different versions on Xbox Live Arcade, but I was wondering because kind of disappointed that it wasn't the whole sex tape thing, so I thought that was actually, you know... Yeah, that's a what... A little bit risky, but, you know, it's kind of good, like, because it sort of sticks with the sort of whole thing of the, you know, you've got animated violence and stuff involved in it, it's kind of a little bit crude in areas, that's sort of what I wanted. This rubber ducky thing, I was just like, that's really odd and it doesn't really fit with the game. I guess maybe they had to change it at the last minute or something. I don't know what the game's be- rated... Because um, they, because the thing is, they, because well, when you fight most of the bad guys, they go, "Oh, we've seen pictures of you naked and stuff." Like when you, when you like the picture they show on there, it's just him in a bathtub with loads of soap suds around him, and it's kind of like, uh. But if it was like the sex tape, that would make more sense. So it almost feels to me like they had to change it at the last minute. They probably um, did, and it's probably for like a rating type thing. Like, yeah, I mean, maybe they may have not been able to, because I would think it's probably rated T. I'm not sure offhand, probably, yeah. but. It's pretty violent, like, but it's animated violence. So yeah, um, yeah. they may have decided to, to change it from that just so they wouldn't yeah. um, well, uh, <laughs> get like an M rating or something. One thing I will say about the game is it's even though I've died quite a lot of times, it's kind of easy because you respawn quite close to back where you were because I've got lots of save points in it. Um, but it's one of the most cathartic games I've ever played. Like you're just cruising along, you know, you're, you're breaking through walls and stuff. You're, sh- you're shooting around and bad guys, and you really kill like a big monster. And it's just like. Yeah, I'm just chilling. It's like just really, it's really nice. <laughs> it's just really nice to play because it's it's not too hard, but it's it's got areas where it's hard enough that you've got to, you know, sort of work out what you're doing. You can't just not be playing. But yeah, really enjoying it. Uh, yeah. Uh, do don't play <laughs> the iPad version of the game because it's not that great. Oh, isn't that that's like a, is it one, like one of those endless running game type things? Or? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, do you know Diogo Miguel? Um, good old Diogo. Hey, <laughs> uh, yeah, he helps uh, test that game. <laughs> there you go. All yeah, right. Big shout out to him. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, we should support it, I guess. But if you don't like it, you don't like it. That's cool. It was okay. It's not bad, but yeah. I would still. I think Jet Jetpack Joyride was better. That's like okay. the most popular one. So if you're gonna get yeah. one. I would probably suggest you you play that well, one instead. I did try to get the hell yeah on my i uh, my iPhone, but it's too old now. 
they stop. They basically stop making games for the iPhone 3GS now. It's kind of annoying. Uh, so about the Windows old. Phone. Come on, Sega. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah. I, I've been playing. Uh, actually, I've been playing Super Magnetic Neo. Um, that's um, what's crazy is this is really I think the first time I've ever really played it. I've owned it a couple other times, but I just never had played it before. But I remember the game being like a 2D side scroller for some reason. Like. <laughs> I don't know why. Like I remember it looking like almost like Mega Man style, but you would like use your yeah. head to like, you know, because the one of the the biggest like play mechanic in the game is it's it's magnets. So you like use like the the north and the south. So um, the polar opposites of the magnets play a role. Like they can either re- like repel you and you jump up in the air, or you could stick to it. So you can like stick to boxes and move around and and get past you know certain obstacles throughout the level, but so I, started, I booted up and started playing it, and it's not a 2D side scroller at all. It's more like a 3D, like behind the back, third person perspective. So think uh, like Crash Bandicoot almost. Like, oh, you know, yeah. Like you're, you're following him. It's, it looks a lot kind of like that. Um, but uh, so you have like two buttons that you press. Like one will activate like the, uh, um, like the, the north um, pole, and one will activate like the south um, polar uh, magnet. And like I said, it, it all like. You interact with the environment through that way, and um, you can do certain things where you can actually like suck an enemy into like a little orb or box and like and, and throw it and uh, kill other enemies that way. But the game is really tough because I'm having a hard time really getting the feel of uh, the the different um, poles, the magnetic poles. So yeah. um, I keep pressing the wrong button when I'm trying to do something else, and it's kind of frustrating. So I went I went and actually uh, reset. Uh, the button layout, and I think that is going to help me a little bit. And the crazy thing is, is you get one hit and you're dead. So oh, um, if you get too close to an enemy, yeah, it's it's really tough. So if you get really uh, like too close to an enemy, yeah, uh, you'll die that way. And I've also found like it's it's somewhat sometimes hard to to jump over like uh, um, like holes or crevices in throughout the level. Um, where there's like a bridge that you have to jump over. Uh, I find myself dying uh, sometimes that way. And I don't know if it's necessarily the camera angle or just me needing to get a better feel for the mechanics and, and you know, the play of the game. Um, but I'm definitely going to keep playing it, and um, I'm hopefully um, I'll, that game will win out <laughs> uh, in the, uh, the the poll, and we can play that for our flashback because that, that would be fun. I, I don't own it. <laughs> you need to go buy it then. You need to go buy it. Oh, man. Oh, there's no... Good retro places near me. I have to go on eBay. Meh. I bought it for like four dollars. It can't be that expensive. Yeah, I don't. Uh, eBay. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. Yeah. Um, I think good that's going to do it for us this week, Graham. Yeah. No, that sounds good. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. I do want to say. Roger. Yeah, I, w- I do want to say a couple things really quick. Oh, okay. um, we Sorry. finally now got the the podcast on iTunes. Um, so if you go on iTunes and search, you'll find it on there. Um, we'll also have a link to it in the show notes, so um, you can get it that way. There's also, we're now on Stitcher as well. So Stitcher is a really awesome app. It's available on the uh, on iOS, Android, I think Palm <laughs> OS, if you use that. Uh, I don't think, it's not yet available on Windows phone. But Palm OS still around. I don't know. It said it on there. And I think Kindle Fire. You can get it on Kindle as well. Damn but then. it's it's great because it's an app where you can actually just stream all of your podcasts. So if you don't like really feel okay. like downloading them all, um, if you have like if you don't have a lot of space and you don't really feel like loading up and, and filling up your hard drive on your phone with, with podcasts, you can just stream it that way. It's really awesome. You can discover a lot of other really good podcasts. It just makes it really easy. Uh, one podcast in particular I suggest you check out is the Retro League. Uh, it's a, one of my favorite podcasts, uh, and they basically talk about retro games, but they also have, have um, a, a, a series that they go through every um, every like every episode. They'll they'll do another series, and I think right now they're going into um, the last few games of like Dying Systems. So like they look at like the you know. For the Sega Genesis, they take a look at like the last three or four games that were released before the Genesis uh, died completely, and they'll do it for each and every retro platform. It's really awesome. Uh, they're very knowledgeable, so I definitely uh, suggest you check them out. They're on Stitcher, uh, so just go ahead and search for them on there. And also, uh, be sure if you're you're listening to follow us on Twitter. It's at Sega Nerds, 
And then on Facebook, if you go to facebook.com slash the Sega Nerds, you can follow us on Facebook Ooh, as well. Yeah. And we're also on Tumblr as well. But I've literally just forgotten what the link was. <laughs> <laughs> Something like Tumblr, Sega Nerds. Just start Sega Nerds and Tumblr, you'll find us. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and then no, we don't Grant, update that one quite as much. But <laughs> Did you submit the podcast in Xbox Music last week? I've, I've, for some reason, it wasn't letting me do it. I, I went online to try. I don't know if it's something to do because I've now got a Windows 8 computer. It's not letting me do it for some reason. Because it's oh. it basically it loads up Zoom on my when I put my phone in and stuff. And you're meant to be able to just like go to your when you got your. We've downloaded a podcast to your collection, which I've done. I've got one in my podcast selection Zoom, on Zoom. You then go to the marketplace, and then there should be an option to the, just click upload podcast. And I went to like the actual like a Microsoft like support site to look at it and that's what they said to do but that option's not there for me and uh, I don't know if it's something weird or because it's now Windows 8 I'm using but that's weird okay well yeah um, I'll, I'll, try, I'll keep trying and hopefully we'll get get it up there but yeah uh, it's being a bit weird right now so yeah keep trying um, hopefully we can get that oh one last thing I posted uh, my second uh, installment in the crazy Sega marketing uh, Today, actually, it was this morning. I posted up. Uh, it talks about uh, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, and some of the crazy things that Sega did to try to market that out. They uh, actually released a video on YouTube showing a Sega developer who was kidnapped <laughs> and and being that's tortured. Uh, it was very uh, bizarre. It was man, that's been over three six years ago now. It was, it was published in like March of two thousand seven. Seems like so long ago, but we actually did some really awesome investigative journalism during that. I mean, yeah. it was really great because we looked through all the clues in the in the uh, the video, and in the background there's these uh, uh, letters S J S. And Graham, you're able to like look on the internet and find that there was actually a a video production company called uh, Small Japanese uh, Soldiers, yeah. based in England, with that same logo. And we're actually able to finally note for some reason uh, Sega when they said that the the announcement was going to be made in April of that year 2007 it never was made and uh, and so we went back and we finally got a hold of small Japanese soldiers and they finally told us like yes we did do it and the game was going to be for Mario and Sonic yeah um, so it was just really weird how it all worked out yeah and the because I remember speaking to well the Sega of Europe um, community managers and like PR guys at the time. And they literally had no idea what this video was. They hadn't even been shown it before. So it's kind of like, it's really odd that Sega could commission this advert, like the Spire advert, didn't tell anybody about it, really. Um, so, yeah, that was, that was one really odd thing about it. Because they were just, we, I asked them, and they're just like, we, this is like the weirdest thing ever. But, yeah, the Mountain 10 has to be legit. And, yeah, odd. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, next, the next installment that's, is going to be uh, NFL 2K5. Um, there's some really crazy stuff that Sega did. This might be, this is probably crazier than what they did with Seaman when they oh, created the Seaman website. This is literally the best thing in the world. And I, can't <laughs> wait. I, just, I know it's going to be a lot of fun. When I first read about it, <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. Okay, yeah, stuff. we can't give too much away. Um, <laughs> you know. But those who know about it, uh, you know, uh, you'll you'll definitely be in for some yeah. some good fun. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, we got a lot of great uh, stuff in store for you this week. So keep checking. out out the site. Um, go ahead and retweet the site. Tell your friends about Sega Nerds. We're uh, you know we're we're finally back and we're uh, doing some really great stuff. So uh, check yeah. out the site and uh, let everyone know. Cool. Cheers, guys. All right. Take it easy. Stay safe.